it's Glass TCG, and today I'm be doing a video on my Jewel deck profile. So this is a budget deck for, I guess you could play it fun. It's more of a fun deck than anything. Uh, you can get some pretty solid wins, which is nice, and I think it's around twenty bucks, twenty to thirty bucks. I spent thirty because I bought it from all from one seller, but. Yeah, it's pretty budget. It, I'd recommend this if you're getting into Vi Schwartz. I'd recommend this for your first or second deck you're going to pick up. So, yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, Jewel doesn't have that much support. Um, so every card is a dollar or less. So, okay, we're going to start level zeros. We ran four copies of former Master Rin. Uh, Master Rin has effect, which is the same as this card right here. Four copies of four Master Luvia. When the other one's on the field, so this one has this one on the field. Whatever's in front of this gets additional soul, and it, this gets 1500 power for every copy of this. And this has the same effect, but, or this has the same effect for this one though. So they're just basically, they're opposite of each other. So for both of those, uh, they can get pretty big early game, which is nice. But they're not the best level zeros in the world. For the Luvias, I think this is mandatory if you're going to be running it. Uh, Jewels in 2020, you're going to need four of the Luvias because of late game. This can come up, but also it's a level zero bomb. So this card's really good. So uh, four copies of the Luvias. Luvian regular clothes, actually. And then four copies of the last level zero. Uh, Kaleido Ruby, Kaleido Ruby, Rin. What this does is you pay two stock. It's a back row character. You pay two stock, rest it, and fetch a character out of your waiting room. So, um, I like seeing this card in multiples. Or no, it's not the worst thing in the world. If you ever draw multiples of it, you can just always send it through the beginning of your turn, I guess. And you also can clock this if you have multiples and you already have one in your back row. Whatever's in center stage also gets 500 power, which is super good. So, four copies of that one. That's it for the level zeros. Level zeros are pretty, uh, I guess they're not the best level zeros. Level one and two is really where the deck has some cool plays, I guess. Um, so we played four top candidate of Clock Tower, Rin. So what this card does is whenever it's on cord, you can pay the cost, which is put the top card of your deck so you take a damage. And whenever it's into the winning room, you can return it on the stage as rest. And then for each of your other jewel characters, it gets 500 power. So if this on board and your whole board's filled, then you will have at most 2,000 extra power. So for those, the cost ones. And then we ran four copies of Domineering Princess Luvia. Um, this is a level one bomb. It's 35 power and zero cost. So, there's a few bombs in this deck, which is pretty nice, but, yeah, we mainly just run this card, because you can just slap it on board and attack, and it doesn't burn up all your stock that you're saving for level 2. And also, I've seen people play this at 3, but this card's pretty insane for this deck. Um, four copies of a Maid's Job Rin. What this card does is whenever it's played, you can take a damage, pay a cost, and then add. So it basically fetches a character out of your waiting room slash grave. So yeah, this card's really good. I wouldn't run this at 3 because it's really good late game. Especially when you're going for your level 2 combo. So yeah, so that's it for level these level 1s. And then our last level 1 is a vanilla beater. It's 4 copies of... Kaleido Sapphire Luvia. Kaleido Sapphire, I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, it's mainly there because it's just, you can slap it on board. It's also reoccurable by uh, both of the Rins, which is nice. And it can come up late game. Uh, level 3, not so much, but level 2, it comes up quite a few times. Okay, level 2s. This is where, so there's no level 3. There's no level 3, I don't think, for jewels right now. Or, uh, I think there might be one coming up in the newest set. So I'd pick these up, if I were you. 
but yeah, let's just get into level twos. Uh, we ran four copies of Flame Burst Luvia. So what this card does is you can pay three stock, so at most you're going to need to have one stock for your Rin that you're going to have to play. You're going to have to want, have one stock for the playing this card, three stock, so you're going to have to have altogether five stock, and a few cards in your hand, or a jewel in your hand to be able to burn for seven damage. So this card, you just pay three stock, um, throw a jewel out of your hand if your copies of this card is on the field, then you can burn for seven damage. It is cancelable, but a lot of times, which is kind of funny, it actually goes through. Especially whenever um, a deck refresh happens, uh, they can't negate the damage because of the refresh, so that's pretty nice. So, uh, four copies of both. Oh, I forgot to explain this card. So, what this card does is it gets 500, or I think... Well, no, all your characters can't side attack, but it gets 1,000 for if your level is 300 or, level or higher. So, if your level is 3 or higher, then it just gets 1,000 power. I think I said th 300 on accident. It doesn't matter. Uh, two of the Luvian uniform. Originally, I was running four to three copies. The reason why I cut it down is because this card is a brick early game. Uh, late game, you always can fetch it through your rins. And another reason is its effect doesn't really come up besides being reoccurable through uh, the Encore effect. Um, you basically just take a damage and it brings itself back, which is nice. But at the same time, uh, it has an effect where if your clock or your level has five or higher, it gets... A 1500 power boost which doesn't come up much because a lot of times you're not going to be wanting to throw your level twos into the clock unless it's super early game so and a lot of times i just keep them in my waiting room so two copies of this then for the climax cards we ran four copies of yearning yearning something like that of summer vacation uh this card is probably the most expensive card in the deck it's i think a dollar 70 a piece they're pretty cheap. Uh, you can get them for cheaper online, probably. It's a shop promo, I think. So you might have to dig around to find it, but it is 100% worth it. So yeah, four copies of this. It's a gate. We only play gates in this deck because gates are, like, insane. Or they're really good, in my opinion. So yeah, uh, we run two gates. The second gate we ran is four copies of Mana Resupply. So, uh, for these, uh, it's the same exact effect, it's just a different artwork and a different name. So, they do the same thing. Um, that's it for the deck profile. I hope you guys like it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be bringing a live duel later for uh, Vice Schwartz and Yu-Gi-Oh! today. So, stay tuned for that. See ya, guys.